I'm going to go back to the line of sight issues and the roof issues. I, can you just lay out very clearly who was responsible for security on those roofs? Was it the locals? What was the plan and how did it fail? And then also, secondly, you keep talking about a paradigm shift, but what, what does that mean? Can you kind of sure. detail what you mean by that? So uh, with respect to the, uh, the AGR building, and that's where you're going for, right? Uh, when we construct a site, uh, not only are we worried about um, uh, what, you know, who can get into a site, but also who can look into that site. So there should have been clear direction about what we needed done at the AGR building. Um, that, that was discussed during the advance, but I think there was a lack of follow through based on what I'm, based on the information I have now and what I'm seeing uh, there should have been better follow through on in, in some aspects of that about access control to that property about access control to the collateral property of the AGR building. And so it was about not giving the state and locals clearer direction on what we needed done uh, with respect to the paradigm shift. Uh, this is about uh, looking at the organization holistically. Uh, for example, the communications issue communications were problematic. Uh, and I think what where I'm looking at is uh, we need to have communications that are more closely aligned to the operations. And so coming out of July 13th, uh, what I've seen and the direction I gave is we have to be very, uh, we have to be very efficient with where we're putting our security rooms. Recently, I was on a visit where, again, similar to Butler, where there was a unified command post, uh, just as there was in Butler, there was one at this location where not only did you have emergency uh, services in, in so far as uh, uh, fire life safety, but you had emergency management officials. You had the highway patrol and the state police in that room. You had local law enforcement in that room. You had secret service agents in that room monitoring frequencies and listening to what was going on on those state and local networks. In addition to that, the locals were flying a drone in proximity to the site. That drone feed was being beamed into that unified command post and our agents had total domain awareness about what was going on. Also, they had traffic cams. They were able to pipe in those traffic cams into that unified command post. That is the model by which our field, they have taken this to heart, and those special agents in the field are now having those conversations, and they are directing exactly what we need, and they're posting our people exactly where we need to be so that when our protectees are in a site, we have total awareness of what's going on around us, and we have total awareness of what's being communicated on those local networks. And if I could just follow up with one question, down in um, West Palm Beach, the, on the evening of the attempted assassination down there, the um, local chief, I believe it was Bradshaw, had said that during when Trump was president, there would have been a lot more security around the per perimeter, but basically now the Secret Service does the best that they can. Can you, but you've said that he has got the highest levels of security now. I mean, can you can compare and contrast, like, is it the same now as he would have been getting while he was per, per, the so, sitting president? So what I'll say is the, the former president has the highest levels of Secret Service protection, and I think uh, the sheriff actually went back and clarified his statement, so I would point you to that. I, I believe he did that on Monday.